Hi, model engineers. My name's Doug, and you are ground zero on the full Earth workshop. Five months now. Yep, five months we have been working on this all metal 1 16th scale RC tank, a Tiger I from World War II. This is going to be a really fun episode because we finally start to paint the tank. So we're going to disassemble, tape, start to spray the tank, and then we'll work on the small figures that we modded from Tamiya. Let's get to it. Here we go again, wild, wonderful, and worthy tankers. This is episode 15 of the RC tank build of the Tiger One, featuring parts from Hanglong, RC Tank Legion Shop, Mato, Clark, and Tigan Tanks. We are finally to painting, and it's been a long and winding road, but here we are. And this is how we are staging everything. First of all comes the sub-assembly disassembly. Now, if I could have had it the way I prefer, we would have this thing running by now. But as you remember, we had a problem with our Clark TK40 board, and we're going to have to send it back to Clark to see how it can be fixed or replaced. So, in the meantime, we're going to take all of these parts out of the inside. Luckily, we mounted them all with Velcro, so it makes that a lot easier. Whenever you get to this point of a build, you tend to say, well, you know, I could probably cut a few corners here. Well, that is not what we're going to do. We are going to make sure that all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted, and we try to make this thing as beautiful as possible when we go to do our painting. Now, the first thing that I noticed during the assembly, a lot of these parts that were on the back panel here started to rattle and get loose. And as I had learned with doing some 8th scale RC stuff, uh, if it has a gas engine on it or a really, really active electric motor, things rattle loose as they run. So a tank, of course, is going to be a rattle trap. Let's make sure that we use some super glue as a thread locker, which is exactly what it was used for originally. And uh, we'll make sure that everything is really locked down before we start. Now, let's not spare any of this blue masking tape. This is the stuff that is normally used for house painting, and it's made by 3M, which uh, means it comes off really easily and uh, really high quality stuff. And since we're really trying to do the best job we can, let's, let's try to use the best quality materials that we can. Now what I try to do is I make many, many layers of this masking tape because it makes it a lot thicker and it's a lot more ability to be handled without tearing. Now this is one method that I wouldn't use if it was a plastic hulled tank, something like a Tigan or a Henglong, but since it's all metal you can cut against it and it forms a really nice tight line. Now the whole idea we're doing it this way, we want to have really crisp lines where the paint ends. Now listen to that ultra cool sound. Do you hear those tracks rattling? I mean that is a scale rattle if I've ever heard it. It sounds exactly like the real one to one scale tanks. Now if you remember it's really Really simple to take off the tracks. All you got to remember, just take off the front sprocket that attaches to the motors and rock it out of the way. Just a little bit of manipulation and those tracks will roll right off for you. Now what we're going to do with these, we're actually going to make these things look like they're rusty because the actual tanks had rust. Uh, they started out painted, but of course, you know, they're the ones that go through all of the friction and all of the wear. The weathering is going to make this thing look cool. Okay, Lynn is going to take a swing now at uh, putting on the base coats to this. Remember, since this is going to be a weathered tank, we're going to put on the, the primer coat and then the red primer, and then we're going to go along with the yellowish green outer cover. And when we do the chipping, it's going to actually look like the real deal because those layers will be under there just like on the real tank. Now, as you probably know, there are several different ways to do authentic looking chipping, and we're going to use several of those. There's additive and subtracting. Now, because we're putting all of these layers, we can easily do the subtractive kind of weathering. Now, the additive is using different variants of that base color, higher and lower, to look like chipping. So you'll see what we're going to be doing a little bit later on. Since this is a pretty big tank, I'm going to have to pull in some more resources, get some more Tamiya paint. And while we do that, we're going to get small. We're going to work on these little figures that we uh, modded together a few episodes back. Man, they are looking good, especially when you start to prime them. 
you can see the base coat here and we're gonna start not with the cap and we're gonna start with the gunner we're gonna make him look like the World War II version even though he is a current version figure I might encourage you to check out episode 12 that is where we modded these figures and that was really a fun episode because we were able to use these really inexpensive Tamiya figures to put something together that looks much more expensive as you know you can spend northward of a hundred dollars on one of these figures that's already painted and especially if it's done from resin because that's kind of a slow process but uh, just doing these I think we had maybe what twenty dollars in both of these figures and it was really fun to make them fit the tank. So let's talk a little bit about the materials that we're using to paint here. We're using the Tamiya X20A thinner. We're also using the Tamiya colors. Uh, several of these that we're mixing together in the gray tones. We're using some Vallejo rust and chipping effects and also the Model Master military figure paints that I really prefer, the uh, Vallejo and the Tamiya. Vallejo paints really tend to work well with the brushes, whereas the Tamiya paints, they are really a lot better when you use your airbrush. What Landon is doing here is basically just blocking in color. We're trying to take the base coats and we're just blocking in the areas that need to be broken out. And later on, we're going to start putting in a little bit of the weathering. We have to make sure that we maintain the proper gloss level for the different materials that we're trying to paint here. Now the gloves and the leather helmet, of course they're going to have a little bit of a sheen, not really glossy, it's going to be kind of a satiny finish. But then of course the fabrics and things are going to be a flat finish and we're going to do a lot of modeling on that with some flecking a little bit later on. Now with the research that I've done, you can find a lot of images of these World War II figures but they're in black and white, so trying to figure out the different colors that they were wearing can be a little more problematic. Now what I have found is there's an interesting mix of black outer garments and then sometimes the undergarments and the pants that they wear are a green with a fleck on them that looks kind of like fatigues. So that is what we're going to be doing with these different figures. We're going to make the captain, the guy who's uh, commanding the tank, we're going to put him in black, but we're going to put the dry here in a flecked material. It is very important to do some research and do a little bit of experimentation when you work on these different paints because there are three different kinds. There are lacquers, there's acrylics, and enamels. Sometimes they're compatible with each other and then other times they'll melt into the other, the previous layer, and totally mess up your paint job. You got to rub it off, sand it off, and then start all over again. You got to be real careful about lacquers. Lacquers definitely burn into the lower layer layer that can be really good because it can be an additive process but if you want something to maintain the integrity that it had before well don't use lacquers. Landon uses kind of an interesting process here to do his washes. Instead of really a wash he'll brush these slightly darker pigments onto a lighter pigment and then he goes back and using his fingers and using paper towels sometimes a cloth towel he gets the modeling to go into these. He's got Gotten a lot of wear into the back of this jacket, which is pretty impressive. Well, now that we have our gunner appropriately filthy, <laughs> we're gonna stop it right here. Don't wait to subscribe, do it now, and hit the bell. You'll be the first person to know about episode 16 coming next.